Hey guys, how's it going? Um, welcome to another video. This is going to be on stack strings. So really sort of simplistic, some would say, in the threat intelligence malware analyst field, but is a very important technique to know about and to understand. Um, stack strings have been used by a number of advanced persistent threats, as well as a lot of crime threat actors, groups, whatever you call them. So um, it's pretty common. It defeats the aim of it is to defeat static analysis and the ability to hide strings that would be able to you would be able to detect. Uh, the main concept is basically exploiting the stack and its abilities in assembly to essentially recreate a string dynamically, dependent on the type of stack string. Some of them are more complicated than others. Um, there are ways to bypass current stack string solutions. So one of the solutions that we have in stack, static analysis in the Mauer Analyst Toolbox is um, Floss. Floss was created by Farai, um, but there is ways around that because of how static analysis works, you are never going to have 100% good. There's always going to be a technique to defeat it, right? Um, fantastic tool floss. Uh, if you've never used it before, F O F L O S S, uh, and then put stat static analysis or something like that. Another good one is obviously P Studio, but that is not what this is about. So let me show you main stack. And I apologise for the keyboard sounds. I do have the microphone on the laptop. Uh, I apologise as well for the. I don't know why I wrote this with profanities, but apparently I did. Uh, it was late at night that I made this, so um, yeah. Um, basically, um, I sort of moved this from another piece of C code that I was working on, and so I've just commented these out. But essentially, we only really need these two, so that's why I've done that. A little declaration for that function. So essentially, the big part here is this bit. The first part is the actual static string that you would expect a um, you would expect a compiler does it in different ways but you would expect a static analysis tool to pick this up this string not always the case but it is hopefully what you would want now the reason why I've commented this HTTPP HTTP is I'm saying that this string is what it's going to be the result after this transformation so we can see that there's a T and I'm putting string, as we can see from the char array there. So what I'm doing is the plus one. So you can sort of get the idea of what that is. It's this location. And you can sort of see what I'm trying to do here. So from these positions, I am, during runtime, changing what the actual value would be. So we are saying that actually in this location of that character array, I want to actually put this during runtime. And the same goes towards a function with a decimal format. So um, the way in C, you can actually set a string as a decimal and it will notice it and put it as a string if you have it in a character array, um, as far as I'm aware. Um, and what I'm sort of doing with this function is I'm trying to overcomplicate it a little bit. So the main thing with obfuscation techniques, right, is that Obfuscation doesn't always have to have, I apologize for the sirens, I live in London, this is how this is. Ah, oh, it's, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful this. I might have to talk through it, oh no. This happens every video, every video. Anyway, um, so yeah, essentially, um, when it comes down to obfuscation, it doesn't always have to be sophisticated, and in this um, case, I'm literally doing one function, adding 100 and then minusing it, and then putting it into brackets and returning it straight away. So absolutely nothing really, a null sub. Um, if there's certain ways that the compiler, depending on the compiler, the, it, it will either overcomplicate it, or I think in this case, it basically receives the number and then just brings it back it doesn't even do the operation it realizes the plus and the minus and realizes that yeah that does not need to be done 
So um, it really depends on the compiler how sophisticated it gets. You can change the optimization, of course, whether whatever compiler you have. But sometimes you might not want optimizations if you want malware to be complicated for a malware analyst. For the, for example, let's go over to my. Um, this is just the source code in C. But what I'm now going to show you is the Windows box where we would do the analysis. Normally for me anyway, I prefer to analyze in Windows. I know there's going to be people screaming, well, that's not how it works. Well, that's how it works, I'm afraid, people. Um, so oh, I've just shown that straight away. Fantastic. Cool. So without them complicated over functions. So first of all, what I did is I compiled it with not that function, but just the 40 plus 6 for that strings in that certain position and then printed it out. So I've got I've actually got three versions, but I'm only going to show you two. So this is the first version. This, if we right click, is the the first string that gets moved in. So the hoop to hoop, um, it actually doesn't recognize it as a string in this either version. So it means that it gets put on the stack string as these. But then you start to realize this. Now this is what you would say a line of hexadecimal. This is what you would be um, seen as a normal, um, basic sort of stack string. The one character, hex character, going into the position, and then the plus one, two. Um, you, you'd sort of expect it to be like this. And then var 14, var 10, you start to see it coming down, and you also start to see that they're just a character. That is classic stack string stuff. If you don't know, while you're in IDA, you can press R to convert it while you're on the value and it will convert it for you. Fantastic. This sort of thing should um, uh, should work correctly with floss. So that is not the command window I wanted. It is this. So um, what is the files that I want? I want main stack, I think. Yes, I want main stack one. It should just print out the value that it gets. Yep, as they all do. So we eventually do result into the 192.168, which is for me sort of like a proof of concept sort of backdoor situation when you reach out to an IP. This is a, it's based on the code to do with binary. Well, it's not really, but I basically started working on this through the binary farm video. So that's that's what I resulted in, just some proof of concept of that. I've got to move myself here to get to that command window. So this is Floss. Um, Floss is made by FireEye, and it is used to detect um, stack strings. So with this version, I had the null function, basically. I had it once, I think, here or somewhere. Um, and it is called here. Right, and if I go into that, we can see it's not even doing any sort of numerical. It's getting it in, and then it's just returning it into EAX. And then when we go back, it will just simply put it into the position it's needed. So it's not it's not doing anything special. It's literally just doing what it's supposed to. It's it's the compiler's optimized it. Um, it's really interesting to see this because when I ran this. Floss is supposed to detect stack strings, as it does successfully, to a degree. Um, so let's call main stack one.exe. Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, and we'll see something interesting, an interesting result, right? Um, absolutely, I can't actually detect this. Uh, you could probably get plugins for it, but basically, um, it doesn't recognize these strings, as far as I'm aware, straight out. So this does take a little bit of a while because um, it's trying to look through all of the code that it can disassemble and then put it into a strings format um, and see if it works and if it's detectable. So I don't, I haven't looked through the floss string, um, floss code, but I'm assuming it attempts to find stack strings in the way that they've got hexadecimal characters to the um, source to destination, see there's a line of them, and then starts to detect them. Now, APT threat actors and crime actors are super lazy and just do this all the time. Um, and don't really, there's not, 
they're not very creative, right? But if you do start to get a little bit creative, you can start to make things a little bit harder for static strings. So we can see that it got it half of it, so it's extracted three stack strings, um, it's got a portion of it, and then it stops. And this is where the, the numerical function started to work. This is where it was basically me just put inputting it into a function, uh, but it was basically just a useless numerical junk sub routine. Now the reason probably why that works is because it's looking for a complete line, usually as well as this, the laziness that um, APT and malware devs have. They just, they just do the same thing. They're happy with it. But if you take a little bit of creativity and say, oh, just input it into a null sub and then bring it back, then it doesn't recognize it because it's not going, it's not in line. A function is going in straight away, which, um, so I downloaded this today before I released the video. I wouldn't say I'm completely knowledgeable, but with the default options of just checking for stack strings, um, this breaks floss. Pretty it should because it's a static string detection technique, but kind of crazy. If we bring up and up the ante a little bit, <coughs> and basically, um, if we were to do this for every strings, it probably wouldn't detect it, as you can probably guess where I'm going with this. But what I did is for the numerical values that I had, I just put them under the function. And now if we put the... Oh, I'll pop the mic. I apologize, guys. If I now put this under the floss detection um, let's see if it gets it okay let's see what it spits out after this source code that we've got here from this source code so now we're running on the binary that I've transferred over we've got hoop dealer hoop um, that's there but we've also got is it going to detect any of this um, let's find out it does take quite a while as I say because stack strings you are literally searching over the binary it's about 300 kilobytes it is a very small binary um, but I'm using a compiler with not many options to make it. Yeah, I'm just, it's, it's, it is inflated. Okay. So it usually takes about six, seven seconds. Cool. Let's, yeah, let's reload it. And as we can see, it's actually had considerable problems and has tried to work out what's going on there and hasn't detected. So if I now, no, run. You can see it there, but just for the emphasis of, yeah, it does. The final result is 192.168.111. So it has not detected the string whatsoever. So if you put it into, and if I put that into IDA, you will see the, the slight difference in it. Um, and I'm not having a go at floss at all, other this is the, just the best static analysis tool for this purpose okay so this is what it would what it looks like now it's got considerably more complicated it's got a little bit fragmented it's probably seen these strings and tried to identify this as well as the end point where it's the colon 80 that i had in the source code so here this is obviously it's it's still in the stack strings but here it becomes a little bit more complicated because the we're putting a register into the um, stack and then we're calling a function. So it's not directly, if you had a human analyst do it, you would notice it straight away because you'd highlight easily like that's the same function. But it's quite complicated doing that statically without an actual human or any sort of, I don't know, machine learning almost, understanding that this is still essentially the same. Um, and that is a way that you can defeat quite easily. But Floss is one of the sophisticated static analysis tools in a malware analyst's hat. So this is kind of interesting, right? You have to, with static uh, tools, it's quite hard to, I don't know why, that I just not great with um, strings anyway. But this is the beauty of, of stack strings. They are attempting to make static analysis harder and making you actually delve into the binary. This can be more complicated. This can be put into routines, more subroutines, and this can be shifted, this can be put into a packer. So there's much more levels, but then you have to take into consideration, depending on whether you're an advanced persistent threat or a crime, how much effort do you put into it, and how detectable would them techniques be. With stack strings, this is actually <coughs> relatively common, so you're not making it absolutely that is your technique 
even with this subroutine, there are pro there are still um, groups that use this technique, but it's it's still it's not out there where you're identifying yourself so much. So it depends on your what your result is. Um, so yeah, a little uh, video showing you the complexities of stack strings. Um, I guess I don't want to put it through a debugger. I feel like a lot of people understand the concept, but if you don't, I guess I can make a follow up, but I don't think it's worth it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys had a good time watching this video. Um, there is more content coming out soon. The second episode of what I did in the last video, which was related to pause related logs, is really interesting. So you should wait up for that. Click the bell and the subscribe button on YouTube because I know that takes precedent over. Um, yeah, I'm not used to YouTube anymore, but yeah. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed, learned something, and yeah, see you in the next one, guys.